Hello everyone, in today's video, we will be creating a Telegram bot that will scrape data from the dev.2 website. This bot will enable us to retrieve the latest articles, tutorials, and discussions from the dev.2 community directly on Telegram. By learning how to build this bot, you'll gain valuable insights into web scraping, API integration, and Telegram bot development. These skills can be applied to various projects, allowing you to automate data retrieval, stay updated with your favorite websites, and even build personalized information aggregators. During this tutorial, we'll cover the fundamentals of Python programming, web scraping using beautiful soup library, handling HTTP request. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, to parse web pages, we will need to install to libraries, beautiful soup and requests. After installing them, we can proceed to write the parser. Next we navigate to the dev.2 website and go to the latest tab where we can find the latest news articles. To parse the data we need to inspect the page source and identify the elements we want to gather. In our case, we are interested in the div block with the class crayon store body and the h2 element with the class crayon store title. To fetch the web page content, we use the requests.get function, which sends an HTTP GET request to the specified URL and retrieves the response. In our case, we pass the URL variable as the argument. The response is stored in the page variable. Next, we create a beautiful soup object by passing the page.content and specifying the parser to be used, in this case, edtl.parser. First, we use the soup.find method to find the div element with the class crayon stored body. This method returns the first matching element found in the parse content and assigns it to the post variable. Next, we use the post.find method to find an h2 element with the class crayon store title within the post element. We then retrieve the text content of this element using the dot text attribute and remove any leading or trailing white space using the dot strip method. The resulting text is assigned to the title variable. Finally, we print the title variable to display the extracted text. Let's run the script and check if it outputs correctly. It outputs what is needed. Now we can proceed to writing the Telegram bot. Don't forget to install the Telebo library. After that we will import all the necessary modules for our work, including beautiful soup and requests. Now let's create an instance of the Telebo class, 
This instance will be used to interact with the Telegram API. Don't forget to provide your bot's token, which you can obtain when creating the bot in Botfather. Also, let's create a variable to store the ID of our Telegram channel. We will create a message handler that will send the received information to the Telegram channel. We will write the function later. Next, let's create a function that will parse the data. We can copy the previous code and paste it here. In addition to that, we need to perform a check on the parsed data. If we successfully extract an article from the website, we will store its title source link and return it. If we fail to extract data while parsing the page, we will return none. Make sure to include the source link to respect copyright. Now let's add a variable that we'll need to track the last processed news. Let's call it last processed news and initialize it as an empty string. We'll also declare it as a global variable in the function that sends us the message. Now when the start message is sent let's start an infinite loop. Inside the loop we'll receive the latest news from the parser function and check if it is not none and not equal to last processed news. If it meets the condition we'll send it to the telegram channel. After sending we'll update the value of last processed news. Sure, let's set the time. Sleep function to 300 seconds to check the website for article updates at that interval. You can adjust the time interval according to your preference. Certainly, let's make some minor adjustments to fix any syntax errors in the code. Once the corrections are made you can run the code for testing.
As we can see everything is working, if you enjoyed this video please subscribe to the channel and like this video. This way I'll know that you like such videos and I'll create more similar tutorials. Also feel free to leave comments on how you would improve this code or any modifications you would make. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next videos.